as the softer it is, it gets a little more spring. I'll show you guys how to make a proper battery cable. And you just hit that thing as hard as you can. All right, well now that we got this thing running, next thing is getting the sway bar on. So we run a blade style rear end. It's uh, pretty slick, made out of these little mounds. I actually drilled out these arms to lighten them up a little bit. And then we have this blade style arm itself that rolls into the sleeve and you bust this little nut off on the back and you can pivot this. Uh, up and down. So the more flat it is, the softer it is, the more vertical it is, the stiffer it is. We're going to bust off these nuts here and mount her up and go from there. So before we pop those subframe nuts off, let's throw these guys on. I love these little screw stands. Tighten that all up. We had to add these little washers. Yeah. This is the main piece and a little support. So there's no leverage, twist on her. And then we'll sling this guy into place. This is our little end link that we made. Moves right up in yonder. Pulls right up there, hangs down, goes on the end of this, bang, bang. So now we got this guy bolted up and in. Give her an old swing. You can see is what I'm talking about with this little piece here. There we go. And put this little guy back on. The thing moves actually pretty easily. But it doesn't take much force to hold her steady. So now, I'll show you how this thing works. We loosen that, and that loosens this guy. Now this can pivot in any direction. And so like I said, think about it like a two by four. The flatter it is, the softer it is. It gets a little more spring. When it's vertical, it's rock solid. And you can even play with it at different angles. It'll get a little twist this way. So we usually have it pretty much set it flat. So I snug that guy down. This is just our little stopper. We actually used to have, this first came up when we had it mounted into the chassis. We had a little cable running off here and the cable ran up and into the car. And I could actually adjust it between runs. Um, and it was one of the things that we used to have to be adjustable between runs when we're running in tandem competition. So a lead run, you could have a full soft and on a chase run, you could put it full stiff if you were chasing someone that was a little bit slower. Um, some of the other drivers had adjustable shocks. That's how they would do it. Um, and uh, some people would just change their power levels with boost. Uh, but we are actually not allowed to have any in cockpit adjustable suspension components anymore. So we just do it manually. We just dial it in. We have the blades on both sides so we can get the most amount of grip possible and just have the most amount of adjustability. Uh, we can also change the actual sway bar itself to a thicker or thinner one to get more or less spring on there. But you know, you can see how much the thing kind of distorting a little bit. Kind of holds steady for you. But uh, yeah, we'll get this other arm on here and the rear end is all done. All right, next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a proper battery cable. It is a lot easier than you would think, especially if you have the right tools, of course, uh, just like anything. But I, I threw a little temporary cable in there to get the thing fired up the other night um, between the alternator and the starter. Uh, but now I'm gonna replace it with one that is uh, proper length, proper fit, so that um, it looks a little tidier. And this is actually two gauge welding cable. You can buy this stuff by the roll, really cheap, it's really affordable, and it's really good um, for being used as battery cables if you guys wanna get something that's a little cheaper than like a brand name. Um, and then what you do is you get your terminal ends. You gotta make sure you get the right size gauge, make sure you get the right size hole. They make them in all different sizes. And so what I have is a hydraulic crimper. This thing is awesome. You actually pick the size gauge wire that you have right here and you change these little inserts right here. And when you set this like it's a jack, you know, you release it and then you close it and then you pump it. It will actually close that thing up and it'll crimp it really nice and tight. Release it, done the job. But if you don't have one of these, what I've done before, and I actually did this on my brother's RX-7, you take a punch, take a hammer, you get a um, flat surface, ideally a vise or anything that's uh, really, really solid. And you just take this punch Center up, nice and good. Sometimes if it's big enough, you can actually do two punches. So you can do one back here and then one more towards the front. And you just hit that thing as hard as you can. So 
See how that just drives that point straight in, swells out the ends. Now you got it grabbing your cable. Look at that. On there. So if you don't have a crimper, that is the way to do it. What I'm gonna do now is show you how this cool little tool works. I'm gonna swap these guys out for the proper size. And so now what you're checking for on these when you're fitting them up is that you actually have two guys together and you can see that it's got a little bit of a gap on the top and the bottom, which means it's gonna have room to crush and then it will give like a nice smooth contact all the way around. Here you wanna get it kind of loaded Getting it so it doesn't fall out, so it's easier to handle. Now, if you're gonna do heat shrink, don't forget that, but I didn't put the other end on yet, so I can slip them both over, so. Push that guy in, nice and good. Now, give this guy a what for? Down. So now it's starting to grab the wire. Let go of that. See how it almost comes all the way together? It means that we got the right size. It's all good. And when you release that, so we got like a nice, awesome crimp all the way around this thing. Things never come out. So another little uh, trick is, it's not really a trick, it's just my OCD taking over, is I'll use black cable on everything in the car, grounds and power cables, but I'll put red heat shrink on the power cables. So. There's no mistake when you're actually taking them off, but then you don't have big, long red wires running all through the car. Cause. And when you're cutting your heat shrink, you know, always make sure you have good contact and you got some good length on there. So I'm gonna go about that far with her. Cut off two pieces, of course, from both ends. You can use a lighter. I recommend using a heat gun though, because the heat gun will not catch your heat shrink on fire. Pulling it on down. And there you go. There's a little thermal end. Nice and solid. I'm going to fit this into the car, route it the way I want it to go, cut off the excess on the other end, get my other crimp on there, get my other piece on there. Now we need a boot. So, got these cool little boots. We are required to have these on there to pass tech. Need one more for the other end. Uh, there's two ways to do this. Some people will run the alternator all the way up to the bulkhead. Uh, some people will run uh, the alternator to the starter and then to the bulkhead as a little uh, daisy chain. I do that because it is a little easier and simpler in this uh, layout because the alternator is right next to the starter. It is better, ideally, to run a separate cable for each, um, but in this case, I'm not too worried about it. This way I've always done it. It's never really been a problem for me. If you're gonna stack them, you gotta put your boot on the one that's on the high side, which is this guy. So I need room, I need engagement. And then when you're tightening down, because I have the battery disconnected, always make sure your battery is disconnected when you're doing this type of work. And then we'll come around to the front. Ugh. Okay, she's on there. Slide your boot back over again. That's how you make a proper battery cable. Uh, like I said, I showed you a couple of different ways, a couple of different wires welding cable if you're trying to do it uh, on a little bit more of a budget but it works perfectly fine I've used it for years I've used it on many different applications uh, the little mil spec stuff is really nice especially if you um, have the extra budget and or uh, ability to get that stuff because it's just tightly it's more tightly wound if that makes sense so you're able to use a thinner gauge and get the same um, current as say a two gauge you can get out of a four gauge on one of those mil spec wires all right good luck to you guys out there whoa you all right